The January 6th committee is nearing its conclusions, preparing a final report and planning what was going to be the final hearing tomorrow, kicked a little bit later, but that's coming too. The evidence points to new witnesses. We expect to see that in whenever the final hearing comes. And we turn now to someone in the news. Former Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman spent months working inside the committee. He has a new book, The Breach, out now, a behind-the-scenes look at this investigation and the data that they sifted. Uh, the former congressman joins me now. Thanks for being here. Ah, it's great to be here. Thanks, Ari. Let's start with the substance. Yes. Then we'll get to the sniping later. Yeah, How's that I'm sound? okay with that. I've, okay. I've been dealing with that backroom Washington stuff for, you're mapping, for a few days. You're mapping this thing that we all remember day of was called a riot, Jan 6, single day crime spree. You're mapping, reading from the book, the main link map you call the monster. You had four people connected to all six clusters of this, and they were in contact with the militias at the highest levels of Trump's circle, the touch points, Gracia, Jones, Davis, Roger Stone, who's back in the news today. Yeah. Um, what was the breakthrough in your investigative work to understand this was really planned with this many tentacles? Breakthrough, the first thing was the call detail records. You know, you have to have those millions of lines of data and enough data to ascertain what's happening. And, you know, I don't want to get too crazy, you know, about using, I'm going to just, just, just like the book, you know, I try to just say it in a very narrative form. You have these groups, you know, and you do something called frequency analysis or the amount of calls that you see. And the first thing that we saw when we started getting all the call detail records is how sort of centralized Tario was, Enrique Tario. Mm -hmm. So then what you do, if you can't get call detail records, say somebody like Roger Stone, you can still run their number against the call detail records they have. So, and the last thing, the third thing is that sometimes the assistance for Stone or for Flynn or for Steve Bannon, who you were just talking about, mm -hmm. or for Alex Jones, they might not be practicing the same operational security. Oh my goodness. All of a sudden, once you get those call detail records, you're seeing these centers of gravity, people that are being called more than most. And at that point, it's an aha moment, because if you've been working in terrorism like right. that, that. So who was the most central of those spokes? The central with the CDRs that we had, and the person who seemed to talk to, to the most people was Tario. But the person who seemed to really be able to sort of sprinkle across things, even without his call detail records and the other evidence we saw, are people like Roger Stone. Yeah. Or the assistance for those individuals I was talking about. And that's striking because Stone has proved his loyalty. He went, he went stood tall, as they put it, to the feds. He got his Trump pardon. Yes. So he's someone who has known Trump forever, and you're saying he's a spoke. What about Mark Meadows? Walk us through that. Yeah, Mark Meadows, when you see the text messages, what's interesting is there's so many things in the book about this that, that are striking and people should be looking at. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about is right now, you know, looking at, at what reporters are doing, there's two things happening out there. You know, we talked about the sniping, but there's actually real reporters looking at the evidence in the book. And so when you look at Mark Meadows, I think the things people should be looking at right now is how many congressmen and senators were actually involved. It's amazing. It's much more than how you know, many. It's probably close to 40, right, that actually were sending texts back and forth. Who were planning to in their in their plan hijack this ceremony on the 6th to create enough mayhem to say that the, the president had not been the president elected not been certified it's 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 worse and better than that um, what I would tell you is that they were sending their ideas from the crazy fever swamps yeah. of QAnon rooms, right, about anything from Italy Gate to this bizarre thing that, uh, that active members were sending about Romania and... How many know, knew that the plan was to storm the Capitol? I don't know if they knew the plan was to storm the Capitol, but if Mark Meadows is talking to every single section of what's happening from the political side, the legal side, right, and the cyber side. I mean, who's the worst person, to, in your view, criminally, that Meadows is talking to? He doesn't talk directly to Tario. He, does, he doesn't talk directly to Stone. You know, as we see, I need, you know, those call detail records. Uh, but, the, but the person that should strike everybody might not be a name that you hear most. And I, and I don't think, I don't know if it's criminally, but somebody who's very interesting is Phil Waldron. And I think, you know, people need to look at those, you know, lower level type of text messages that are happening. Um, but if you're looking at the text... He's a military vet who was, who was trying to push these ideas about, that's correct. about everything from martial law to, to again, mm -hmm. hijacking the six. Do you think most of the story is now out or the committee has a lot left to tell us? I think we all have a lot left. I think the committee has done an incredible job with what they're allowed to do with the amazing work and the, and, and the, and the investigative teams they have. But the data, we need another year to year and a half with the data. I mean, when you're talking about this many individuals, when you're talking about frequency analysis, when you're talking about command and control networks, we need more time with the data. And, and again, um, it's just amazing to me that what we have seen in the data, everything from, you know, with the text messages to Meadows from, from Jim Jordan, you know, trying to lead the efforts to overturn the election.
transition from CPI, you know, which is pretty amazing, right? When you're looking at somebody like Bianca Gracia, right, who also had calls back and forth from the White House. Uh, when you have Kelly Sorrell, NBC News, right? Kelly Sorrell, again, found out that Kelly Sorrell was texting a White House aide and the son of Rudy Giuliani. So you, right. you shake that data tree and you get an Andrew Giuliani. That's pretty cool. And that was just yesterday or today. Right. So that goes to all the work. We're running out of time. Um, the committee has has basically said, hey, thanks for your service, but you're kind of out of pocket here. Yeah. Uh, what You have every right to publish as reporters. We want to get all the info we can. Um, but what contributed to your idea to put this out now, moving a little bit ahead of them, doing the book and breaking ties with the committee? Where, where are you at with that? And do they have a point that as an employee, you kind of went sideways, they say, even that you violated some of your employment agreement. Uh, I, I'm an employee of the American people. I'm a former congressman and former counterterrorism analyst. And uh, the data belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to the committee. It uh, doesn't belong to me. I mean, I appreciate you being here. I would fact check that and say, I'm not sure the American people have hired you recently. You were a congressman at one point. But here, they're saying that you signed agreements to be confidential through the end and that you're not doing that. Didn't Your sign, response to that is? I did not sign any agreements to be confidential through the end. No NDAs, no employee agreements. I actually, when I came onto the committee, it was as actually underneath the threshold where I could still consult and do my private businesses. Okay. So that's a bit of a misnomer, whoever's leaking there. And that's why I try not to get into this weird DC backroom stuff because this book, I would say, and, and, and I think that's why you're seeing a lessening of this right now. This supports the committee. But the American people need to know the data. My job is the American yeah, people. Yeah, I think, and from our estimation, there's overlapping oh, commonality here because the committee's work thus far with the hearings, and we'll see the report, and your book are talking about the problems. Uh, last question, though, because as I said, we would save the sniping for last. Good to my <laughs> word. Uh, what grade, even with this little interaction you're having, whatever you want to call it, what grade do you give the committee's investigative performance thus far? Uh, well, with what they could do with the, the data they have and the authorities they have, I would give them an A minus. Um, and, I, and I would think, though, to get to an A plus, I think we need to actually increase investments in cyber and data analysis. And just like you saw right now, those little pieces of data are very important. And I'm going to leave it with this. Nine seconds is an eternity to a counterterrorism analyst. And when you see people going to encrypted apps on text messages, when you see what's happening, I've only seen that at other times, right? And yeah. that's when I was doing counterterrorism. Uh, very, very interesting stuff. We Thanks, want to get, get all perspectives. Denver Riggleman, who's been on the inside. Thank you, sir. Hey, I'm Ari Melber. Thanks for watching The Beat. I wanted to let you know I'm writing a forward to the January 6th committee's full report, which is coming out soon from HarperCollins. You can go pre-order the book right now, and it'll come to you first when the report comes out, in the fall or whenever the government releases it. Just search Melber Jan 6th on Amazon or your favorite independent book site and click pre-order. You'll be the first to get both the report and my new piece on the coup conspiracy. You can also go to melbourbook.com and order it there.